urban explorers have read it. What was your I Better GTFO story? I was exploring an abandoned mine shaft for the second day in a row. This was a small old Midwestern town that used to be booming from the mining industry, but has long been abandoned. It was also a 10 minute walk from the nearest road. This time I went with different friends and better flashlights. The door I had gone through the first day was now padlocked shut. That should have been the first red flag, but we found an entrance from the rooftop into one of the main buildings and continued to explore anyway. After exploring about three floors of mine shaft below ground, we were back on the main floor exploring the workshop garage and I was looking through the cracks of light coming through the rusted metal walls when I noticed a bright color that stood out from the rest of the area. It was a man looking back at me through the cracks. I was seeing his blue sweater. I could see two sets of eyes looking into the room that we were in. After whispering to my friends that there were people watching us through the wall, we fucking booked it out of there and jumped off the roof and into the woods. The men were in a pickup truck and drove around looking for us, even getting out of the truck to look around. We couldn't see them from where we took cover, but we could hear the truck stop, the doors open, and footsteps breaking leaves and twigs only 20 feet away from us. We hid there for about 15 minutes while the men searched all around for us. It is harder than most people think to try and be quiet. You're breathing after sprinting. It was terrifying. I'm not going back there. As a teen, I used to break into an old aluminum factory a lot. Led, who was with me at the time, up a staircase winding around pill-shaped vats with small flap lids. Four flights up, we start seeing feathers, then a dead bird, then a pile of dead birds, with no open ceiling where they could have flown in. We turn around and he stops me, says he saw some dust fall, and we notice the lid on the vat next to us is open. There were no noises aside from us, which was somehow comforting. Still never went back after that. I was exploring an old stormwater filtration plant once. The lower levels of the main building were all flooded, which was super creepy, and it was pretty overgrown. This was my second time there, and I wanted to see more than I had last time. A friend of mine and I had the bright idea to climb into one of the pipes that had an open manhole cover. Really stupid for a whole bunch of reasons. We figured we knew, or had a pretty good guess, where it would come out, as there was another manhole on the other side of the compound in line with where the pipes were heading. When we got all the way there though, it turned out to be welded shut. The worst bit was when we turned to go back, we realized we'd been slowly going downhill. The pipe was fairly slimy, and it seemed for a minute like we wouldn't be able to go back the way we'd come. I've never quite felt that level of claustrophobia before or since. Not terribly urban, back when I lived in the rural south, but my friend and I went to an abandoned trailer because she wanted to show me all the old playboys that were left lying around in it. There were pentagrams painted on the front door and on one of the walls of the bedroom that was through the kitchen, but that wasn't too spooky. My brother was one of those edgy teenagers and I'd seen more than enough crookedly spray painted pentagrams to know it was just idiots goofing off. Nah, the scary part was the half dead cat hung by its back legs on the ceiling fan in the back room down the hall. We went to take it down so we could call the cops and then hopefully get to bury it at her house and give it some peace. And then it woke up and started squalling. It scratched me on my arms and her on the face and tried to get away, but it was so weak all it could do was stagger. We eventually got it wrapped in my shirt and walked home to explain to her mom where we were and how it happened. That crotchety old cat lived like another six years with no teeth, dislocated back legs, fixed by the vet of course, but the cat still limped forever, and horrible cataract. When me and my friends were young, we lived in a trailer park community in a bad part of Phoenix, but we loved exploring anyway. We found a large old storm drain behind our community covered in graffiti and weeds, and we decided to explore. Walking in with many flashlights, we kept seeing spots of blood and more strange graffiti, after about 30-ish minutes, we started hearing tapping. We got scared and started to walk back out when we noticed it seemed to be following us. We ran like our lives depended on it. A few weeks after that, our community manager discovered a body near the entrance of the storm drain. That was the last of our exploring. Boy oh boy, do I have a story. Went urban exploring in an abandoned college campus. It was pretty cool, due to be demolished and there was some really nice graffiti. At the time, I kept sending video messages to a friend of mine, roaming around looking at everything. 
The way the area was set up was pretty much a singular building in this giant lot with nothing on it, right in the middle with it being open area about 100 meters either way. The building was three stories and on the ground floor had an open area where there appeared to be an abandoned car. So, I was messing around looking at this graffiti and the random junk everywhere and recording videos for my friend when I finally went to record the graffiti right next to the car. I started filming a video of the graffiti when, what do you know, the car turns on. I immediately throw my hands up and point toward the gate to gesture, sorry, didn't realize someone was here, I'll be on my way. When the guy starts blaring on the horn and starts revving the engine, at this point, I'm startled and decide to gun it down the driveway back to the gate. And what do you know, he starts speeding after me in the car while still blaring on the horn. Due to being startled and running, I apparently accidentally hit send to the video I had took on my phone to my friend, whilst all captioning it 1111 as I was running away. I have the video saved if anyone's curious. At this point, I was right in the headlights with him right behind me, so I turned off the driveway and ran over a pile of rocks, falling down on my way to the other side of them. Scratched my knee really badly. Glasses went flying off and got scratched up too. I get the glasses and sprint, more like hobble quickly, to the fence, where there's some bush covering. The guy pulls up nearby and winds down the window, and you can smell the car from how far I was. It was putrid, and the guy for sure looked like he was living out of the car. I have insane adrenaline going, and sort of slink further away through the bushes, but can't get over the fence. I figured I could wait the guy out. I was there for around 20 minutes, whilst he sat there with his car idling. By this point, my friend was practically having a panic attack, thinking I just got murdered, and my adrenaline was wearing off, and the pain from my leg was setting in, so I couldn't climb the fence and get away quickly without him noticing. My friend was messaging me like crazy, asking if I was okay, and she ended up driving to the place to rescue me. She pulled up a bit the street, and the guy drove up towards there, which gave me the chance to climb the fence. She rushed down to where I had said I was, picked me up, and we drove off. Never have I been so scared in my life, and have never appreciated someone more. I convinced a group of about five or so of my friends to go with me into this old house that was in an odd sort of industrial area, like on one of those service roads next to a highway. The only way in was to go through the basement and through a hole in the wall at the top of the stairs. After exploring for a while, I thought I'd do a scout mission for fun that involved me just walking around the house to check for cops. Well, what do you know? There were cop cars just pulling into the street with sirens on that were pulling into the restaurant next door. Someone probably reported us. The exit was on the other side of the house from the cops. I quickly called up to the others to climb back out, and we somehow managed. I don't generally believe in intuition, but I do find it odd that I had the urge to do a sweep right when the cops showed up. I was 16 or 17, so like 2006-ish, out in a park out in a western suburb of Chicago with some friends. It's a medium-sized forest preserve with a big industrial lot leading to the parking lot, then a prairie area, then a big old forest with paths. We're walking around this forest for a few hours in the early afternoon and see some random pentagrams around and stuff. Honestly, nothing super out of the ordinary, but they seem concentrated by this field that's probably like 2,000 square feet of four foot tall grass. For whatever reason, I thought it would be fun to walk into the middle of the grass field. Right in the dead center, there was like an eight foot long, three foot wide rectangle of freshly dug ground, like perfect for a body. Because of how tall the grass was, it was almost totally covered. But when I moved the grass back, it was like a burial mound. I told my friend we had to leave, and so we beelined back to the parking lot. My friend didn't smoke in his car, so we had a cig next to the car cop pulls up and we're underage so we flick our cigarettes and start to get in the car cop turns on his lights and stops us once he sees we're kids he says something like better get out of here it's not a good place to be after dark spooky cement tunnel that seems to lead underground very dark and echoes go on for ages we had no clue what it was didn't seem to be any kind of drainage tunnel because it was square bone dry and out in an open field there are definitely some old bomb shelters and missile silos in our area that are out of commission. So we decided to take a look, only about 20 yards in, and the light from outside starts really fading behind us. 
Someone takes out a flashlight, and we start seeing bare human footprints on the ground leading deeper into the dark, none leaving. We skedaddled. When exploring in an old textile mill in rural Alabama, it was easy enough to hide your car for parking, and you could even pull your car onto the site if you had four-wheel drive. We went often, and one time parked right in the middle of the mill's back lot and decided to climb the ladder to the roof. Once we got to the roof, the sun started setting, so we got our headlamps ready, watched the sunset, then decided to head back down from the roof. As we're walking to the ladder, my car alarm down below starts going off, and immediately, from the rooftop across from us, someone flashed a flashlight at us, but they never said a thing. I was way too nervous about my car being stolen to really care about the other person, but they didn't chase us, yell, nothing. They just kept their light on us so that we could never see them, and followed us with their light till we got into the car and left. I never went back after that. It's torn down now. I was inside an abandoned brewery looking at the old equipment. I climbed a lot of stairs and found a door with scribbles of graffiti on it, among them the sentence, don't look down, and commit suicide here. We were about four stories off the ground at this point, but my curiosity was killing me. I opened the door. Nothing. No stairs or balcony or fence. The door was on the wall of the building and opened into thin air, and you absolutely would have been killed painfully had you fallen out. A little bit late here, but I once went exploring with my brother on an old abandoned naval base at midnight. We snuck into the officer's quarters and were just exploring when we heard a weird noise. We're both into photography, so I decided to take a flash photo and see if I caught anything weird in the light. The camera went off and we both saw a massive, six foot long bee's nest on the side of one of the walls. I think our presence had just disturbed them because hundreds of them were already crawling in the outside of the nest. It was the single most scariest thing I've ever seen. And it was gone in a second because of the camera flash. We noped the fuck out of there right as a cop was pulling up to see what we were up to, lol. There was this massive salt storage facility that had a mountain of salt that a private company owned on a rather derelict property next to the city bay. I'm guessing the company sold salt to the city and other municipalities for road maintenance during the winter. My friends and I, all about 12 at the time, as kids do at that age, thought it would be cool to sneak in and climb to the top of this major salt mountain. This salt mountain was about 200 feet high. It was massive. We get to the top and celebrate it, rewarded with the most gorgeous view of the city skyline and its buildings lit up across the bay as the afternoon had turned to dusk. As we're getting ready to come down off the mountain, there were about five guard dogs, I believe Dobermans, who were at the bottom of the salt mound, staring up at us with a piercing glare. They couldn't get up the mountain because they couldn't get traction on the salt and it probably hurt their paws. We all started freaking out. My friend's little brother began crying. We began yelling for help, but nobody was around. It was late on a cold Sunday afternoon in November. The sky's hue darkened as dusk turned to dark. We were probably up there for two hours trying to figure out what to do. We finally got silent, laid flat, and acted like we disappeared. The dogs must have gotten bored or distracted and began wandering away. We kept looking and looking, and when they didn't come back for 20 minutes, we traversed off of the salt mound as fast as we could and made a mad dash with a fence in which we entered and luckily all got out safely. Our parents were all pissed, ready to call the cops because none of us came home at dark. It was one of the most scariest moments of my childhood. There was an abandoned house down the road from my high school that was still filled with stuff. Some friends and I would hang out in there from time to time. There was a point where the house got boarded up and we didn't go into it for a while jumped to a few months later, and one of my friends told me he found a way inside. After a couple more weeks, I went to the house with one friend to check it out again and relive some memories. When we got there, it was clear something bad had taken place. The stuff in the house was thrown all over the place. Any kind of dish from the kitchen was smashed on the floor. When we looked at the stairs to the second floor, we both got the worst feeling, like we would find something terrible if we went up there. So we got the hell out of there. After a couple more months, the house was demolished. My friends and I explored an abandoned grain factory in Johnson City, Tennessee. It's been torn down now, but it was massive, stories upon stories. It was like 11 p.m. and pitch black in there, and we had crappy little flashlights. We were getting this horrible smell like death. 
but kept exploring like dumbasses. We went all the way to the top floor and discovered it was a currently empty heroin den, complete with spoons and shit. Definitely scrammed at that point. Sort of urban exploring, I guess. When I was at U Chicago, they were renovating some of the Green Line stations, and a friend and I would jump the turnstiles at the station across from our building at night to get high and watch the trains. Day two of the station being closed, and one of the conductors saw us and actually stopped, so we got on with only one other person in the car, thinking it'd be fun to just ride it until it came back. It's pretty late, and after a few minutes, we realized the homeless looking guy sitting at the other end of the car isn't actually masturbating, he's cleaning a gun. Got off only to realize it was Ashland and 63rd bound train and had no idea where the F we were. To this day, neither of us remember how we made it home. Only now writing this do I realize we had no way of getting back since they wouldn't have stopped at our station again. When I was a teenager, some friends and I would occasionally party in the disused biology department of the local university would get in through a hole one of us cut in the barbed wire fence surrounding the building. Maybe the fourth or fifth time hanging out there, a few of us are exploring and find a lab that's still got like beakers and vials in it. And there's this big ass walk-in freezer type door in the back with plastic tape over it, sort of like crime scene tape. Being the young imbeciles we were, we tore the tape off and opened the door. It was definitely some kind of storage area with shelves full of jars of weird liquids and powders and the ground was covered in broken glass from a jar that had fallen and shattered, releasing this red, powdery substance that was coating everything. We realized it was probably hazardous to our health, went back to the main group, and we all left and never went back. I still have no idea what the stuff was. It could have been harmless, but I'm also glad we were sober enough not to, like, try tasting it or something stupid like that. 